The world of mixed martial arts is full of stories where the underdog snatches victory from the favorite. But most memorable are those bouts where serious underdogs, against whom bookmakers set sky-high odds, dominate their opponents, leaving them no chance. Today we will tell you about the outstanding upsets in the world of MMA in recent years. Bobby Green's career has almost always been a roller coaster of ups and downs. After being beaten by Islam Makachev and knocked out by Drew Dober, Green suddenly choked out Tony Ferguson. Acting as a gatekeeper, Bobby faced the promising grappler, Grant Dawson. In the latest fight, he dismantled Demir Izmagulov and was preparing to do the same with the dark-skinned king. The agging and unstable green opened as a serious underdog at 4-1, while Dawson, who had won his last 10 fights, stood at 125. The veteran considered this disrespect and decided to screw the odds. Bobby demolished his promising opponent and took home the performance of the night bonus. Oh my God! Leon Edwards, one of the most boring welterweight fighters, at least that's what they thought until August 2022. Rocky won the vast majority of his fights by decision, and although he dominated Nate Diaz throughout the fight, he messed up significantly at the very end. With great difficulty, Leon extended his undefeated streak to nine fights and finally got a title shot against one of the greatest welterweights, Kamaru Usman. Edwards' chances were modestly estimated, with bookmakers giving him odds of 3.5 for victory. The Nigerian, who had been undefeated for almost nine years, was at 1.4. Kamaru was supposed to dominate the contender, dealing with him effortlessly, especially since he had already done it back in 2015. The script for the second encounter wasn't much different. The champion grinded out the fight. In the dull match, Usman looked preferable. Before the start of the fifth round, Edwards' corner delivered a legendary speech. Listen, stop feeling sorry for your fucking self. Well, come on then. What's wrong with you? You're too fucking down. You gotta pull the shit out of the fire. Come on, Leon, man. You got it, man. Come on. But the picture didn't change much. Kamaru continued to dominate the contender. Everything was heading towards Leon losing by unanimous decision. But the left head kick had a slightly different opinion on the matter. Rocky not only staged a comeback, but also pulled off the upset of the year. He chopped down the legendary opponent in the final minute of the last round and became the new welterweight champion. after receiving an Oscar for his good acting in the form of the UFC belt. Masters! Sterling faced massive hate. Despite Petr Jan being the sole culprit in the outcome of that fight, all the blame fell on Aljamain. But he didn't succumb to provocations, which helped him win the next three fights against Yan, Dillashaw, and Sejudo. From being the least favorite champion with weak acting skills, Sterling became one of the greatest representatives of the bantamweight division. At the same time, rising to the top of the division was Dana White's favorite, Sean O'Malley. After losing to Marlon Vera in 2020, Sugar built an impressive win streak against tough middleweights. Then the UFC decided on a blatant audacity. Sean, who was ranked 13th, was matched up with the division's number one, Peter Yan. Bypassing all other contenders, O'Malley received a title shot, where he opened as a significant underdog at 4.3. The former champion, who had lost his last fight, was rated at 1.3 by analysts. Sugar proved him wrong in the octagon. Time after time, Sean hit his target. but Jan didn't yield. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Then get it back, so to 
speak. Oh, I love that trip. Each technical move from both sides was breathtaking. Oh, you actually got the double. Unexpectedly, the underdog gave the former champion a worthy resistance. As a result of the extremely close fight, the judges saw victory for Sean O'Malley. The verdict was controversial and not everyone agreed with it, but there was no point in arguing anymore. Sugar defeated a man who, on paper, was stronger in all aspects. Such could be attributed to a miracle. If in the main event of UFC 292, Sean wasn't fighting against Sterling for the world champion title. Bookmakers, as practice showed, don't learn from mistakes. They once again underestimated Sugar, hanging a high coefficient of 3.2 on him. The champion was rated at 1.4. O'Malley didn't allow Aljamain to fight back. Not allowing your opponent to get to a takedown. Nicely done. And pulled out his ace from the sleeve. Sean knocked out Sterling and won the gold belt. TKO! Yeah, this is just the beginning of the Sugar Era. I'm running this until 2035, baby. Dreykus Duplessis is one of the most unexpected champions. Almost before every UFC fight of his, analysts questioned his success, but still knocks pushed through. Eventually, matchmakers matched him with the people's champion Robert Whittaker, making the collision a contender's fight. In his latest bout, the juggernaut returned to the winning path by defeating Marvin Vittori. Over his years in the UFC, he only fought the best. Romero, Souza, Kenonier, Adesanya, and nearly all of them. With his experience, much higher fighter IQ, and rich arsenal, Robert was considered a serious favorite and was quoted at 1.2. The brute Duplessis went in at 4.2 and had very little chance with his chaotic style. Whitaker started with pressing. Yes, I've played UFC 5. It is orthodox. It may not be traditional. The Reaper was winning rounds, but Dreykus executed a takedown and drew blood. Oh, big elbow from Duplessis. Big round. Yep. Dreykus Duplessis. This is huge. The second round started with the favorite's favorite combination. Robert kept firing, but Duplessis absorbed the hits and didn't flinch. When Whitaker utilized everything in his arsenal, Still Knox decided to show what he's capable of. He forced the referee to intervene to stop the beating by the cage. Since Valentina Shevchenko lost to Amanda Nunes in 2017, she gained momentum. The bullet dominated for five years, took the belt, and defended it several times. Oh, heck yeah, it's it. When the hot Mexican Alexa Grasso with a four-win streak emerged on the horizon, bookmakers didn't rate her. Rather, they underestimated her. She got odds of 6.2, while the champion got 1.2. Understanding such odds was quite simple, since Shevchenko had previously fought those who hardly yielded to the new contender. Several times, Alexa even landed great shots on Val. Oh! However, in aggregate, Shevchenko looked more reliable and secured the fight through wrestling. Shevchenko oh, a good shot there. A rather dull fight reached the fourth round, where the champion started picking up the pace. Oh, he catched with that perfect timing. Playing around in striking, she made the biggest mistake of her life, threw a botched spinning back kick. Alexa immediately pounced from behind and found herself in back mount on Shevchenko. The Mexican squeezed the champion's jaw in a lock with such force that the champion's head turned horribly purple. Shevchenko had no choice but to surrender. Grasso won despite being labeled as an outsider and became the new champion. Until 2023, Sean Strickland was a solid near-top contender who won most of his fights by decisions. A year before his resounding success, the Redneck lost twice. Good because he's... Oh! Oh! That's That's so 
However, in 2023, Strickland unexpectedly started gaining momentum. He defeated two Dagestani fighters, Nasruddin Imavov and Abu Supyan Magomedov. Closing two losses with two wins, Sean got a great chance to fight for the belt against Adesanya. Being at a lower level, Strickland also came in on short notice. These factors served as the basis for the bookmakers, who greatly underestimated the redneck, giving him a huge coefficient of 6.1. The champion, who prematurely finished Pereira in the last fight. was rated at 117. Everything looked like another victory for Israel. But in the first round, Sean provided him with the first dose of shock therapy. Strickland. <laughs> who didn't manage to properly prepare for the fight, dominated for five rounds. Adesanya, being the favorite, lost, and Sean became the new and most unexpected champion of 2023. Ah! Amanda Nunes is the greatest woman to ever step into the octagon. She held two belts. Ah! Amanda! Beat the strongest. And remained the best among the girls. When the Brazilian cleared out the division, the UFC had to match her up with Juliana Pena, who didn't deserve to fight for the belt, as she was choked out a year ago. The Venezuelan vixen barely closed the defeat in the fight against Sarah McMahon when she got a title shot against the Queen. Pena was a big underdog, rated at a monstrous 8.5 by analysts. The champion, on the other hand, went for a paltry 1.1. The first round went without incidents. The interesting part began in the second, when the girls engaged in an open fight. At one point, the contender started out striking the champion. But that wasn't enough for her. She knocked Nunes down, climbed into back mount, and choked Amanda out. Joe Rogan called this upset the greatest in UFC history. When the reigning flyweight champion Demetrius Johnson Lost to Henry Cejudo in the rematch, Dana White got an excellent chance to get rid of him. He struck a deal with the One League and exchanged the greatest flyweight for Ben Askren. In the Asian promotion, as expected, the aging Demetrius didn't get lost and won three fights. Hold on, wait then he was arranged a title fight against champion Adriano Marias. The Black Diamond was known for his dangerous ground game and was three years younger than Mighty Mouse. But experts weren't concerned about that. They saw Johnson as a big favorite with a coefficient of 1.14, while Marias, being the champion, turned out to be an outsider with a monstrous 5.7. It was hard to argue with such odds, as Johnson had dominated all his opponents for the last 10 years, except for the close fight with Tsehudo, and Marias had recently lost to Geje Eustachio. Adriano invested in kicks and worked in the ground game. Outside. In the second round, Mighty Mouse picked up the pace, but missed. When it was Adriano's turn to shoot, he didn't miss. Staying out of reach of the hands of Demetrius, almost walked into a high net. now for the champion. Throws the knee of the jaw. DJ's hurt. Knee, uppercut, and another deadly knee, which put a fat period. Marias defended the belt and became the first man to prematurely stop Johnson in his 15-year career. Upsets are that part of combat sports that we love to watch because even the most formidable favorite can lose to an apparently weak outsider. Is there a morale to this story? There is. Even if the world doubts you, never doubt yourself. Friends, if you like the video, don't hesitate to like it and be sure to subscribe to the channel.